am Tina Morse, and I'm here again with Andrea Brook, founder of YogaGirl.com. Hi, Hi Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> so good to have you here today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Well, last week we discussed second chakra issues that connected us to our sensations and the choices we make in the world. Today we're going to look at Chakra 3, an Eastern and Western perspectives regarding our personal power, self-confidence, and our ego. So we're going to explore our relationship with ourselves, our work, and our ability to manifest what we want in the world. What is your definition of the third chakra, and what is its purpose? I love using the definitions of the words themselves. Chakra 3 is named Manipura, and Manipura means Great Citadel. So in other words, it's the capital of ourselves. It's the power center of ourselves. And if we think about the power center uh, or the capital of a country, um, we can recognize whether that capital either represents the country, the people that it governs, or does not. And we see that in the relationship that people have with, the, with their military. Does the military control the country? Or is the military there to support and defend the country? If the military is there to control its people, then what we have is we have a relationship where the capital or the governing power has a power over its people. The same thing happens with us. We might have that type of a third chakra where we feel that power is power over. When you see a country where the military and the government are representing and supporting and defending the rights and the people of that country, then you see a representation of power with rather than power over. So how the people and the government and the military all work together as one whole. That's such a fantastic metaphor. Can you give some examples of the countries, one versus the other, with what you just said? Well, we can look into the Middle East right now, and, and we can see how there are, there are many different situations in which the people are rising up and demanding, they're, they're forming their own military units, or the dictator has a military that's perhaps even going to the degree of genocide and killing its people, uh, eliminating entire factions of people. Yeah, eliminating responsibility. Exactly. And responsibility is a big part of the third chakra, so you've really touched on one of the cornerstones of the third chakra of Manipura, and, you know, perhaps even in what is the purpose of the third chakra, part of it is being able to take responsibility, to recognize a sense of I. We talked about previously the infantile paradigm that occurs with responsibility, where we begin to look to somebody else to tell us what's right and what's wrong. When we move into the third chakra, we fully own our own sense of responsibility, and we recognize that when we are acting and doing and working in this world, we have a responsibility to this world. We have a responsibility to ourselves, to our to our neighbors, to our country, and to the world as a whole. And so that's a really big part of it. So perhaps one of the big purpose purposes of the third chakra is to own that responsibility. And what you said, recognize that I, and the I am, because I mean I see so many adults that do give us that responsibility. They're you know consistently asking outside of themselves, what should we do? Where should we go? What should we eat? What should I wear? <laughs> exactly. I have a really interesting um, story that goes with that with that thought process. Um, in 1992, I spent uh, four months in Russia, in St. Petersburg, Russia. And um, this was at a time where a huge change was taking place. Uh, to give a little historical background, um, the, uh, the Soviet Union came to a full end 
in December of 91 when Yeltsin was elected president of Russia. So you no longer had the Soviet Union. You now had separate countries. And, um, and I showed up in February of 92, so it had been about a month and a half. And um, in the Soviet era, the propaganda that existed was that you are not an individual. You are a member of society. And as such, the government was determining what society did. And so you were really governed by whatever the government had to say about anything. So you had no personal power or responsibility. It was all just, what is the government saying, and here's what I'm doing. You're a number. You were a number, exactly. So when the Soviet Union ended, and suddenly there was this democratization of, uh, of Russia, of society, you had all these individuals who now had to take responsibility for themselves. Mm -hmm. But they hadn't been to office. And not only that, they had recognized or, or seen themselves as members of society. So when I asked people, well, how do you feel, they felt like failures because the Soviet Union had quote-unquote failed or lost the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And as the government, the Soviet Union, dictated society, mm -hmm. which dictated the individual, mm -hmm. well then, the Soviet Union failed, so what are you? Right. You're a failure. Right. Yeah. And so we have that many example going on here now. Exactly. If they can't pay their money back, why should we pay our money back? <laughs> it's all about responsibility. Exactly. And personal power. Exactly. What are symptoms that you've seen in people with your chakra issues that come into you? What does that look like in your practice? Again, I look at it from the deficient, excessive standpoint. Um, in a deficient third chakra, you have an individual who doesn't have any personal power. They are afraid to move forward. Uh, they have a difficulty working, making money, manifesting, um, demonstrating themselves in the world. And often, uh, often they feel like they can't, like they just can't make money and they can't get a job and they can't work and make things happen. On the flip side of that, in the excessive, uh, we also have a lot of people who have focused their entire lives on what is it that I do. Instead of acknowledging themselves as a whole being, they see themselves as what they do. Their yeah, work. the whole being, and that's just part of who they are but not the whole picture of who they are. Exactly. And so this brings us to our ego and a relationship with our ego. I see the ego as a car, which is perfect because Los Angeles is such an egoic town. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. You are your car. You are your car. <laughs> and it's interesting because it, uh, the way that I look at it is that the car represents the ego. If the car is not well maintained and it's breaking down all the time and you don't have any gas in it and uh, the tires are flat and you're not taking care of it, then when you go to, go to where you need to go in order to do what you want to do, you can't get there. Mm -hmm. yeah, and right. so that's an example of a deficient third chakra mm -hmm. where there just isn't that attention and really stoking of the fire of the, of the third chakra to make sure that your car is operating well. Mm -hmm. Attention to detail. Exactly. On the other hand, there are a lot of individuals who relate to their car. So basically, they've got this super nice car. They're putting all this money into their monthly uh, payments, their insurance, you know, uh, maintaining it. Um, and so, yeah, when they want to go somewhere, they can go out there, they can hop in, and they know it's going to take them there. But their relationship is so tied to this image of what the car is, they get where they're going, and they don't get out. Mm -hmm. They go into the meeting or the party or whatever it is that they're going to, and they're still stuck in that image. They're flashing their keychain. Exactly. <laughs> the keychain and exactly. anything else it represents. <laughs> and kind of saying, well, this is who I am. 
I'm right. this car. Right. <laughs> right. When really isn't there more to it than that. <laughs> A part of that pie, a part of that uh, wheel. <laughs> so, how do you see third chakra issues manifest in relationships? But that besides what we already <laughs> talked about, <laughs> this is this is a really important um, aspect of life right now. Is that many relationships uh, are ego relationships, where the two individuals are looking at what they're going to get and how they're going to look how it makes them look and how it makes them feel on an egoic level. So in other words, they are getting involved with somebody who either um, demonstrates how powerful and great they are to the world so that they can continue to show off, they can continue to flash that keychain and show that they are somebody in the world rather than how they feel with the person based on the person's um, sense of presence in the relationship. Absolutely. And it's not a giving and receiving relationship. It's one where it's about what can you do for me? Or perhaps, here's what I'm going to do for you, and here's what you're going to give me back. So it's almost more of a business deal. Than a relationship out of love, out of care, out of compassion, out of acceptance and understanding. And I think any relationship, that is a part of the relationship, but it should not be the foundation and the, you know, the, 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 it's not the heart center. Yes. And what ends up happening a lot of times is arguments. Mm -hmm. The element of the third chakra is fire. And so when that fire gets blown up, what we feel is that heat, and we start to see red, and we get angry. And so often in relationships, it manifests as a fight and a power struggle. Again, power over rather than power with. Mm -hmm. exactly. Suddenly, you're that person's threatening your ego, threatening your power, and so now you have to push that person down in order to demonstrate that you are the stronger one. Mm -hmm. When really bringing ourselves back into balance, coming into a place where we have self-confidence, self-respect, self-esteem, the key word in all three of those is the word self. Mm -hmm. Recognizing our own power from the sense of how we feel about ourselves. We don't need someone else to say, oh, look at his fancy job, his fancy car, his fancy clothes, you know, look what she's got, mm -hmm. and that competitive nature that then says, well, my confidence and my self-respect are based on what other people think of me. Yeah, this and is really, truly, the best relationships are when there is a balance of that recognize that in the other person and you recognize that in yourself as well. I mean, who wants to, who wants to lead the way all the time? <laughs> That's really exactly. And that there's that balance. And really, instead of coming to the other person with, this is what I can do for you, instead it's, I'm here for you. I'll help you. I'll support you. I'll be there for you um, when you need me. And I believe in you. I have confidence in you. I have respect for you. I have an enormous amount of esteem for you. And so I know you can do it, and I'll be here to help. And that all sounded very much more heart-centered than the salesman from some of the things that you were saying earlier that really did sound like a salesman. Exactly. And a pitch. And it's just a different energy, completely different energy. Absolutely. Let's and talk for a minute about me versus want. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, in a deficient chakra, where we don't have a sense of self-confidence, self-esteem, self-respect, and personal power, then we need somebody to tell us that we are great. And so suddenly, we're looking for a relationship, for a third chakra relationship, to fill us up with those things. Because 
we don't have it. So we seek it outside ourselves. And so we literally need that. Whereas if an individual has a balanced third chakra and does feel that sense of self-confidence based on self, then instead receiving uh, compliments and um, and that you know that recognition of you as a dynamic, amazing individual is something that feels good. And mm-hmm. of course, we want that. We all want that, but we don't need it. And there's a big difference there. A very big difference. So, looking at the third chakra, let's talk a minute about how that ego just takes over sometimes. We're seeing this so much in today's society, in particular in, in Western society, where we're all looking to be as rich and powerful as possible. We're going out there and we're demonstrating our success and our power. And we're all eating it up, right? I mean, what if, let's look at some of these these TV shows that are out there um, looking at, uh, you know, what is Donald Trump's TV show where he <laughs> tells you, I can't recall it, but he basically tells you're you, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> You know, I mean, and there, there it is. There's this person who has demonstrated how powerful he is that he can go on national TV or, you know, uh, all over the world and people can see him and go, that person has the greatest power. And literally, you're fired. Um, this is what we're doing nowadays so often in the world. So, speaking of fire... <laughs> How do you work with third chakra imbalances where one fire shows up as anger or opposite that completely gets extinguished and goes out? Their light is out. Well, if we think about a fire, a fire is very important. It is what takes potential energy and turns it into kinetic energy. So it takes uh, that potential energy and turns it into heat and light which gives us the ability to see and do and be in this world. We have the warmth that we need. We have the, um, the energy behind us to ignite us into action so that we can manifest and, uh, and, and work and meet our goals. Mm, so our basic needs are met. Um, having a place, a roof over our head and good food to eat and such a great example, Tina, because this the relationship between third chakra and first chakra is so important. Mm-hmm. And if you think about a fire, you take wood, which is earth, which is first chakra, and you stoke the fire, and you stoke the fire, and you turn it into heat and light. Okay. And so there's this direct relationship between money and um, and fire and our basic needs. And so those first third chakra relationships comes into play a great deal. And if we don't have any wood, then we don't have any fire. And so we need to find that balance of the first and third chakras. Now what happens if we take, you know, just a huge amount of wood and throw it on that fire? Well, then we have a bonfire. And what can happen is it gets out of control. Now we can't control that. It's burning wildly, and we can see that that then becomes destructive. Um, I I used to live in Malibu, and there were um, the fires there a few years ago, and um, and some kids were, uh, you know, just having a good time, and they built a fire, and it got bigger than what they could control, and within a few hours, 54 structures were destroyed in a few hours, and so you see how you can start off thinking, yes, let's create that heat and warmth, let's create what we need in order to in order to feel good, and then we let that get out of control. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, if there isn't enough wood, then the fire goes out. And so we've lost our, you know, really our, our, our sense of, of, of ourself and our ability to do and our ability to work. We don't have the basic fuel to go, and so we go back to that car. We don't have any gas in the car, and so we can go get in the car, and it might work fine, and it might be beautiful, and then we might have a Ferrari that just got detailed, 
There's no gas in the car, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so this relationship to fire is to recognize that there's a certain size fire mm -hmm. that's right. That's okay. not destructive or diminishing. As you were saying all of that, I was thinking of that Madoff and all the stocks, um, you know, the, all, the, all that they were doing, and it was kind of like his own ego was getting out of control, and that fire was, oh, I see, at the top of the world, it was, it was, that fire is raging, and how he used it as a force of destruction rather than... Well, we see the excessive exactly. self-power, exactly. and that sense that we are all powerful. And it's interesting because the uh, the third chakra relates with the sun. Um, on an energetic level, it is um, it is at the solar plexus, and the color is yellow. And we're looking really at that bright yellow sun. And if we look at the different planets, uh, what the relationship to the sun is with them, like the closer in that you are, it's too hot and it can't sustain life. Mm -hmm. The further out that you are, it's too cold and it can't sustain life. And so really there's that perfect balance where uh, where the sun is giving us the right amount of heat and light in order to promote life. Last time we talked about global issues relating to second chakra and Brazil. Any thoughts on where third chakra issues are showing up on the map today? Honestly, Tina, I think that the United States is a perfect example of the third chakra. We are we're working really hard right now to uh, to figure out what our power is on a financial level and also on a military level. We have gone into many countries with our with our military and are um, and are exerting our power there on that level. At the same time, we're struggling with our own economy and our own ability to, uh, to, to feel confident in the world. I mean, we've just had our, our credit rating uh, lowered. And so suddenly, who we are in the world and our power has been demonstrated that maybe we're not all that great. Mm. <laughs> it's been diminished. It's been diminished. And yes, we still feel a sense of power and we recognize that that exists, but are we using that power as a power over, or are we using that power as a power with? Mm, that's right. Yeah. Um, you know, personal, um, we all need one another. So, you know, another thing that, again, to go back to Russia in, in the early 90s, um, it was so fascinating because uh, so often I would see Russian people watching Dallas, mm -hmm. the TV program right. Dallas. So it was one of the most popular, that and Baywatch. <laughs> when I was <laughs> that was true. <laughs> they loved Dallas uh -huh. and Baywatch. And I mean, and really, let's look at, Dallas and Baywatch are, are both third chakra shows. And Dynasty. And Dynasty. <laughs> These are third chakra shows. They, they show the flashiness of having a lot of money, of being rich, of being powerful, of being able to, you know, to exert one's control and, uh, and influence over other people. And um, in, in terms of, say, Dallas, and then in terms of Baywatch, it's about the ego in terms of, look what I look like. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and, and really, let's, let's be honest, there's so much plastic surgery here in the United States. Um, we're all doing our best to look perfect. Mm -hmm. And again, that's that ego, and, and our relationship with perfectionism mm -hmm. is very much an ego, uh, it's an ego play. Um, we feel like we have to be perfect, we feel like we have to be the best. We're very competitive by nature. Uh, we need to be the number one country. You know, even our TV programs, um, or, or, or our news broadcasts, uh, are often very much like football games. And we're showing this team against this team, and who's winning. Mm -hmm. And there's such a competitive nature to the American, uh, to the American policy, mm -hmm. and how we relate to the world, right. and how we relate to ourselves. Very much a sense of me versus we. Yes. And there it is. Me, mine, I. Mm -hmm. And the terrible twos. We haven't talked about when is the third chakra first energized, which right. occurs 
when we're two. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we go into those terrible twos and we learn what is our power by learning me, mine, I, and we start to, you know, rebel against our parents and our parents, uh, uh, you know, start this dance with us about what we can and cannot do. It's very important. I mean, this sets the tone for our relationship with our personal power and our ego for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. do, did our parents do a good job of giving us power and giving us a sense of power? Allowing us to share in that power, making yes. decisions. Absolutely. While at the same time not letting us run the household and then not being pushovers and just letting us do whatever we wanted. Right. And so there's really, there's a balance between that that um, that relationship or that learning of what is the right amount of power, what is the right amount of fire, what is the right amount of me and my ego in this world, in this being, in this lifetime. What are some of the ways you help people stand more in their power? I love that you use the word stand. Uh, the third chakra from a body perspective relates with our core, um, so our, our, our abdominal strength and also our legs. And so being able to stand on our legs and feel strong in our legs and thus the ability to move forward and to go out into the world and do what we need to do to manifest our goals. So great exercises for the third chakra are running. That can make you feel powerful. That can make you feel very and connected. And, and it strong. ignites your fire. Okay. <laughs> it really ignites your fire. In a yoga, in yoga postures, I encourage people to do warrior poses where they stand in their power. And, um, and this is really important. Um, there is uh, uh, the word for warrior pose in, in yoga is... Um, Facing on the name of it, hold on, it'll come back to me. Uh, Virabhadrasana. Sorry about okay. that. Virabhadrasana, and Virabhadra was uh, an offspring of Shiva. Uh, literally, he sprung forth from Shiva's hair in Hindu mythology. And uh, the reason why he was so powerful is because he stayed in one place. He stood his ground. And so, whenever people came to fight him. They had to come and fight him on his terms and in his power, and he never lost. And so really being able to stand in who we are mm -hmm. as ourselves, on our ground, in our strength, in our confidence, in ourselves, is really that sense of Virabhadra, of being Virabhadra, of embodying Virabhadra, and Im embodying our personal power. And really, when you're honest about who you are, from that authentic place, what is there to argue with? Exactly. <laughs> you know, really. And if you're working from a place of power with, mm -hmm. then also you stand your ground and you also welcome. The other person can come to you and you're ready to, to listen and to work on it. Maybe, you, like hopefully, you never even have to fight them because you're there in your truth and in your power welcoming the other to come to them in their truth and in their power. And then we have compromise. And we begin to work together. And we have the money for us. That is not governing by force, but governing by consensus. Thank you so much, Andrea. This was very empowering and enlightening conversation as always.